if you can catch this one, hero. Uh, Oops. Leo, I hope it didn't destroy the computer. We gotta check it out now. Okay, Katie, I'm right behind you. See you later, hero. I hope my computer's okay. Computer, you're all right. Hi, Junior Ranger Zari. Hi, Leo. There's an animal stuck in the middle of the road, and cars are moving by really fast. It looks like some type of scaly reptile. I need your help to save it. We'll be right over, Zari. Please, hurry. Ranger out. Ranger out. We have to go right now. We can find out more information about the animal on the way there. Roger that, Leo. See you downstairs. Ranger Leo all set. Woohoo! <laughs> Junior Rangers to the rescue! Platypus One, activate! Here, Here we, go. we go! Don't worry, I'm here! And I won't take my eyes off you! Hello? Oh, yes, Mommy! Uh, got it, Mommy. <gasps> oh, no! Where did it go? What did you find out about the reptile, Katie? It's not a reptile, Leo. The animal Zari found is a Sunda pangolin. It's a mammal, and one of the few known to be covered in scales from head to toe. Pangolins are nocturnal, shy, and solitary. A shy mammal with scales? Cool! Hi, Zari. Hi, Zari. The animal on the road is a Sunda pangolin. Yeah, about that. I, um, lost it. Oh, no. It must be around here somewhere. Let's spread out and search. Jetpack activate. activate. Time to roll. Where are you, pangolin? Great idea, hero. Now let's see if we can spot the pangolin. <gasps> there it is! I see it! <gasps> the pangolin turned into a ball? We need to get it off the road quick! I can dash out and pick it up! No! It's too dangerous, Zari! I've got another idea. I'll swoop down and grab the pangolin. Katie, Zari, tell me when there are no cars. Be careful, Leo! I'm ready. Wait for it. Wait. And now! I'm coming for you, Pangolin. No, Leo. A car is coming. Fly back up. Ah. Whoa. Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky! You're safe now, Leo. Thanks, Ranger Rocky. But the Pangolin is still stuck in the middle of the road. Something's wrong with it, Ranger Rocky. It turned into a ball. Don't worry, Junior Rangers. That's the pangolin's way of protecting itself. When Sunda pangolins feel threatened, they curl up into a tight ball to cover vulnerable parts like their face and belly. The scales act as a piece of armor and protects them from being eaten by predators. Their scales are so tough, even tigers can't bite through them. But are pangolin scales tough enough to protect it from being run over by a car? Definitely not. However, you need to find a solution that doesn't put you in danger. I know what to do, Ranger Rocky. We can use the jetpack. I'll use my tablet to control the jetpack from here. We won't have to go out onto the road at all. Excellent idea, Katie. Okay, Katie, let's do this. And activate. Watch out for that car. Another one's coming your way. Almost got you, Pangolin. <gasps> car! I see. was close. It's okay, Pangolin. You're safe now. <laughs> What's that smell? Ugh. Yuck! It's so bad! That's coming from the Pangolin. 
Pangolins produce a foul smell as a form of defense. The pangolin must still be afraid. What else can we do to make it feel safe again? Now, let's give the pangolin some space. Look, the pangolin is uncurling. Goodbye, pangolin. Stay safe. Don't cross any more roads. That was an intense rescue, but I'm glad we got the pangolin to the other side of the road safely. <laughs> Hero wants to play fetch again. Okay, Hero. See if you can catch this. <laughs> wow, good boy. Awesome catch, Hero. Good job, children. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The Estuarine Crocodile. <laughs> oh, hi everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger. And this is my puppy, Hero. I just saw a big bird drop something. Do you want to help me look for it? You found it, Hero? Oh, it's an egg, but it's already empty. I wonder what was in it. What's the matter, Hero? Don't be sad about an empty egg. Ah, Hero! It's some kind of lizard. Are you okay, Hero? I wonder what kind of lizard this is. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Say cheese. Katie, are you there? A lizard just hatched from its egg in the garden. Hi, Leo. Wow, look at its teeth. They're tiny, but they look really sharp. Yeah, Hero already knows that. Can you find more information about it? Of course I can. Great, I'm coming up. Hero, you stay here and watch over our little friend. I'll be right back. Come on, everybody. Let's go into the treehouse. Hi, Katie. Did you find out what kind of lizard it is? Hi, Leo. As it turns out, it's not a lizard. It's a crocodile. And this one is an estuarine crocodile, also known as the saltwater crocodile. A crocodile in our garden? Wow! As a baby, it's very small, but it can grow up to five meters in length. That's huge! An estuarine crocodile must eat a lot to get to that size. The estuarine crocodile is a carnivore, which means it feeds on other animals. On almost every animal, it can even attack humans. Hmm, where do estuarine crocodiles come from? Estuarine crocodiles can be found in the tropical parts of Southeast Asia, South Asia, Australia, and the Pacific. They usually live in mangrove swamps or estuaries. A mangrove swamp is a place in the tropics where trees grow thickly along a saltwater river or sea. An estuary is an area where a river meets the sea. We should go there and return the baby crocodile to its nest. Come and join us. Good thinking, Leo. See you downstairs. For lots of fun and lots to learn. One, two, off we go. For lots of fun and lots to learn. Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky! Welcome to the mangrove swamp, Junior Rangers. Ah, I see you have a baby estuarine crocodile with you. Yes, Ranger Rocky. It came from an egg that a big bird dropped in our garden. Perhaps the bird stole the egg from a nest. Estuarine crocodiles typically lay 40 to 60 eggs. 
If the eggs are kept at a temperature between 30 and 33 degrees Celsius, most of the baby crocodiles will be male. If the temperature is a bit higher or lower, then most baby crocodiles will be female. Unfortunately, only a few baby crocodiles will grow to become an adult. Most baby crocodiles are eaten in their first year by animals, such as large fish and birds. But as adults, these crocodiles have no natural predators, aside from humans and other estuarine crocodiles. If you want to find the baby crocodile's nest, look for a place without large fish or birds. Large fish and birds eat baby crocodiles. And remember, always keep your distance from crocodiles. They are dangerous animals. Stay safe and good luck, Junior Rangers. Thank you, Ranger Rocky. Let's see what we can find. Here is a part of the mangrove swamp. Whoa, these birds are really large. And on this side is another part of the mangrove swamp. I don't see any animals around. Do you know where we should go? Over there is a part of the mangrove swamp with large birds. And over there is a part of the mangrove swamp without any animals in sight. So where should we go? There? That's right! We need to go there because there are no large birds that can eat baby crocodiles. Let's go! What is it, Hero? A sign? Oh, it's warning us that there are crocodiles nearby. I don't see any crocodiles, but we better be careful, Katie. Let's keep walking. It says here that crocodiles are very good at hiding in water. We should also avoid thick vegetation where crocodiles could hide. So, if crocodiles are very good at hiding, does that mean there might be crocodiles here, but we just can't see them? Um, there might be, Leo. Wait, where's Hero? <laughs> Hero! Leo, humans can run faster than crocodiles on land. Let's hope so, Katie. Run! Oh no, another crocodile! Let's jump on these logs in the river. These aren't logs, Katie. They're crocodiles. Yikes! There's only one way out. Everybody, it's time to fly. Oh, that was close. But what should we look for now? Hello, Junior Rangers. Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky. Estuarine crocodiles lay their eggs in a mound of vegetation and mud. So if you want to find the baby crocodile's nest, just look for a mound made of twigs. Not for a basket of tasty figs or a pen full of pigs, but look for a mound made of twigs. I see. So not for a basket of tasty figs or a pen full of pigs, but, but look, look for a mound made of twigs. Remember, mother crocodiles guard their nests fiercely. So always keep a safe distance from the nest. Thank you, Ranger Rocky. Okay, Hero, to find the baby crocodile's nest, you have to look for a mound made of twigs. Good luck. <laughs> Hero, there are a few dots on your radar. One of them might be the baby crocodile's nest. What's that? Hmm. It's a bird's nest. Let's move on. Is this a crocodile's nest? It's a nest, but not of a crocodile. So let's keep looking. Is that a mound made of twigs? Yes, it is. It's the crocodile's nest. Great work, Hero. We're coming over. It. We found the baby crocodile's nest. Great job, everyone! Hooray! Yay! We found a baby S2 
estuarine crocodile in our garden. We learned that estuarine crocodiles live in a mangrove swamp or estuary. So we returned the baby crocodile to its nest in the mangrove swamp. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. Mission accomplished. The Green Iguana. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger. And this is my puppy, Hero. Those are juggling balls, Hero. Check me out. Can you pass me another ball, Hero? Thank you. This is getting difficult. Ah! Oh dear. Let's find those balls, Hero. It's a lizard. Whoa, that's a strong tail. I wonder what kind of lizard it is. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Smile, lizard. Hi, Katie. I just sent you a photo of a lizard we found in our garden. Hi, Leo. Wow, its skin is so green. Can you find more information about it? Of course I can. Great. See you soon. Hero, you watch over our new friend. I'll be right back. Come on, everybody. Let's go into the treehouse. Hi, Katie. So what did you find about the lizard? Hi, Leo. This lizard is a green iguana, also known as the common iguana. Some green iguanas come in different colors and they can change their color when they get older. The green iguana you found is still young. An adult iguana can grow up to two meters long. Green iguanas are herbivores. They feed on leafy green plants, flowers, and fruits. Green iguanas can be found in rainforests of Central, South America, and the Caribbean. Green iguanas like to spend most of their time in trees. When they are high up in the tree, they can enjoy the sunlight. Sunlight helps them control their body temperature. Then we should bring our new friend back to the trees in the rainforest. Come and join us. The green iguana would love that, Leo. See you downstairs. For lots of fun and lots to learn. One, two, off we go. For lots of fun and lots to learn. Ranger Rocky! Hello, Junior Rangers. Welcome to the rainforest. What did you find in your garden this time? Ah, a green iguana. Yes, Ranger Rocky. We want to return it to its natural home. We found out that green iguanas like to be high up on a tree. Correct, Katie. The coloring of their bodies helps them to blend into the trees. However, iguanas still have to keep a constant lookout for predators, like hawks, eagles, or snakes. On top of having excellent eyesight to do just that, green iguanas also have a third eye. The third eye of the green iguana is right on top of the iguana's head. It's also known as the parietal eye. The third eye does not see as normal eyes do, but it can sense movement and change of light. The third eye is particularly useful when iguanas are looking out for hawks and eagles that fly above them. What happens when green iguanas encounter their predators? Green iguanas can put up a good fight with their long tails, sharp teeth, and spines on their bodies. Their dewlaps can be raised to make themselves look 
bigger, too. Unfortunately, green iguanas face other threats. People like to keep them as pets, but most people don't know how to take proper care of them. Many iguanas in captivity die within a year due to a lack of sunlight or proper food. The green iguana belongs on branches high up in the trees, where it can receive enough sunlight and find food to eat. To find branches that are high enough for plenty of sunlight, you have to go deeper into the rainforest. Good luck, Junior Rangers! Thank, Thank you, Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky! Let's see what we can find. Here is a patch of short grass. And on this side are branches high up in trees. Do you know where we should go? Over there is a patch of short grass. And over there are branches high up in trees. So where should we go? There? That's right! We need to go to the branches that are high up in trees because green iguanas need to get enough sunlight. Let's go! I think this is a good spot for the green iguana. Enjoy, iguana! Let's hope this is the right place for it. Look up there, Leo! It's a hawk! One of the green iguana's predators! Why is the green iguana not running away? Green iguanas blend well into their surroundings. They will stay very still until a predator passes them by. It's too late! Let's use our propellers and distract the hawk. Move, green iguana! Its tail came off! Now let's get away from here! Poor iguana! Don't worry, Leo. Sometimes green iguanas drop their tails when they are trying to escape from a predator. This might help them get away. The iguana will even grow a new tail. Really? That's great to hear, Katie. Where should we go now? Hello, Junior Rangers. Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky. Green iguanas like to be near water so they can easily jump into it to escape from predators. So if you want to find a home for the green iguana, just look for a tree branch that hangs above water, not for a playful otter or a farmer's daughter. But look for a tree branch that hangs above water. I see. So not for a playful otter or a farmer's daughter, but, but look, look for, for a tree branch, branch that, that hangs above, above water. water. Thank you, Ranger Rocky. OK, Hero, to find a home for the green iguana, you have to look for a tree branch that hangs above water. Good luck. Hero, there are a few dots in your radar. One of them might be a home for the green iguana. Is this a good home for the iguana? It's a branch, but it's above the ground. Let's move on. Is this a tree branch that hangs above water? Hmm, no. These are vines in a tree. So let's continue. What is this? It's a tree branch that hangs above water. You did it, Hero. We're coming over. We found the green iguana's home. Great work, everybody. Yay! Yay! a green iguana in our garden. We learned that green iguanas like to stay high up in trees to enjoy the sunlight. We also learned that green iguanas like to live near water. So when there's danger, they can escape by jumping into the water. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. Mission accomplished. <laughs>